hey, my junk don't work, they'd be like, a witch stole my penis. Here we are today with a true first impression of the Essence Witch Side Eyeshadow Palette. I say it's a true first impression because I've used Essence for like brow products, like some cheaper ones, um, like little brow pencils that cost like two bucks. I've used uh, their brow like setting gel mascara wand thing. If you guys, you guys probably know what I'm talking about, but I don't know what I'm talking about, sorry. I use those. But we really have never used anything like makeup, makeup wise, that sounds so dumb. But like, I've never bought a palette from them. I've never used their foundations. I've never tried anything that really is like, like those are kind of like additional products. Like I never do my full brow using those products. I just kind of use them to like fill in places and keep my hairs from flying away, things like that. So today we are going to do a true first impression and test out the eyeshadow palette that I picked up a little while ago. I think it's gorgeous. Um, there's a lot of really pretty colors in here, very neutral. Um, still some that I really think can make a nice bold look. I love the whole multicolored uh, shimmers that we've got going on. And it does give off like a very like kind of soft, almost like like moonlight witch vibe. I love it, I love it. And if you guys have been with us for any length of time, you might've heard me talk about uh, my history degree. I have a performance theater and a history degree from uh, my university. And my history degree, one of the things that I focused a lot on was the witch trials. And so I wrote a 15 page paper uh, my junior year about the, uh, the witch trials in Europe. And then in my senior year, I decided to do a, uh, a senior seminar, like independent study, where I wrote a 27 page paper on the American witch trials, the Salem witch trials that we all know about. So I'm gonna talk about Malleus Malvicarum while I do my makeup today so that we can uh, we can look at the, 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 the world of witchcraft and how the witch trials came to be. I'm also going to, just for uh, for fun, do a first impression of the Melania, uh, the Melania, the Milani Peachella. Ludicrous Lights uh, highlighter. I was really hopeful about these little Milani highlighters. I bought all three of them in the collection. They're on sale for $5. I tried one of them, didn't love it. So I'm not, I don't, we'll see how this one goes, but whatever, let's jump in. Let's start with the highlighter just so we can get it uh, all, all good and gone out of the way. So what is Malleus Maleficarum? So Malleus Maleficarum was written in 1486. It was published in 1487. It was written by Heinrich Kramer and Jacob Springer, although Kramer really gets most of the credit because people aren't really sure if Springer did anything besides just attach his name to it. It do be like that, you know? Sometimes you just gotta clamp onto those coattails and write it to fame. I wouldn't want to be attached to this book, but that's, you know, it was his choice. So they were members of the, I have to look this one up, uh, Dominican Order and, Inquisi and Inquisitors, sorry, speaking is hard. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. For the Catholic Church. So they were high up officials in the Catholic Church. And this was kind of the start of people really blaming witches for things, anything really, anything they could possibly come up with. So when they wrote this book, this book was meant to one, identify if even the Catholic religion would allow the existence of witches to be believed, um, which spoiler alert, they did. And two, uh, it was also meant to kind of address how to identify a witch and what to do with them once you've caught one. You got this witch, what do you do with her? She's, you know, doing bad things like stealing penises. Don't worry, that's coming. Sidetracks, so we can also focus on the palette. I am going to do what I'm thinking. Lid, because this is a pretty dark red color. I'm thinking lid, blending shade, we're gonna go this guy right here, freaking gorgeous, love him. He almost kind of gets lost in there because all these other glitters, but I love him. I think he's gonna be our highlight shade. It's gonna be one of those two, those two. That one may be better because it's a little bit lighter, but we'll, we'll see. Um, blending shade, and then I'm thinking we're gonna do on the lid, we're probably, I wanna keep it kind of subtle and kind of pink today, but it's gonna be between these two. I'm actually leaning towards this one because I really like the way that I think these two are gonna play off each other, but we'll see. So let's go in. This one is Potion. The red one is Potion. Going into Potion. So so my homies Kramer and Springer, they write this book, it gets published, and it more or less outlines, one, how to identify a witch. How do you know she is a witch? She looks like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two, how to uh, to handle them out afterwards. Now they justify the existence of witches by saying basically, if Satan is real, we believe in Satan. We know he's not he's not a cool dude. 
We know we have to be afraid of him. If he's real, why would why is he not able to manipulate people into following in his footsteps? So the whole idea, the basis of this book is yes, obviously, which is a real because the devil can manipulate people. Well, who was the devil gonna try and manipulate? At the time, it would be the weaker people, which would be the women. I'll just share, just give you a spoiler alert. My whole thesis was that the witch trials as a whole, whether you believe the existence of witches and witchcraft or not, was based on the fact that the church and society as a whole was trying to control women and women's sexuality and um, keep women from gaining any sort of power or any sort of leg up um, in a society that really wanted them to be more or less property. Uh, that was my thesis for both papers. I think it stood pretty true. There's some good evidence to support it. A lot of women who were accused, especially in Salem, were women who were set to be landowners because of their father's um, shares of land and they didn't have either brothers who were going to inherit it or whatever. There's evidence of that. It's not every circumstance where there's these kind of like, you know, specific guidelines like, oh, this is who we targeted, but there's a lot of that. A lot of things too, like, Women who, I don't know, they would like insult their husband, they'd call him like a lazy pig and the next day he'd be like, well, she's a witch and they'd be like, clearly she is and the devil made her say that, so let's kill her. Anyway, that was my whole thesis and I think it, it stood pretty true, but let's get back to the Malleus Maleficarum. This is, so, it's so, there's so much in this and this is gonna be a quick video, so this is just gonna be like a kind of an overview of what it is. We can really get into it, but there it's, it's a lot. There's so much on it. It's a great read. Just remember it was written in the 1400s in German and then translated to English throughout the years. And so it is dense, I mean dense. Okay, I think I've actually changed my mind off camera, finishing up the um, the potion shade, which by the way, applied beautifully. Um, it wasn't really patchy, it applied really well, very easy to work with, super creamy formula. So I'm liking it a lot so far. I think I paid like $11 for this palette. So keep that in mind too. It is like very, very affordable and I'm really enjoying um, just what I've seen of that first shade. I think though instead, I mentioned these two colors which are both beautiful. I'm kind of vibing this purple over here, but I'm not sure if that's gonna pull it toward. They do a good job of organizing the colors in this too, just as I'm looking at it. Like there's a good, like you kind of can see where they're kind of going. Like this whole area is similar. This whole area is a little bit darker. There's kind of like the mediums in the between. No, I doubted myself. I'm not gonna doubt myself. I'm going in with magic. Magic is the shade that I originally said. So we're gonna do that as the blending shade. Let's go. Okay, let's start talking about some of the fun stuff in the book. Um, like I said, there's just so much, but we're just gonna break down, broken down into parts for readability's sake. Um, and it, the parts are, the first part, treating on the three necessary concomitants. I don't know what that means. I am not going to lie to you. I should have done more research. It's been so long since I've actually read the book. I read it like four times in two years and then all of a sudden it's been, I graduated in 2016 and here we are in 2020. So it's been a hot minute since I've been reading about witchcraft. But uh, the concomitants, con Calm to tense because it was hard enough for me to say it the first time. I don't even know which one's right. I, we're moving on. Of witchcraft, uh, which are the devil, a witch, and the permission of the of Almighty God. So basically, that is where they kind of say, how can we justify if we believe in God? How can we justify the existence of witches? It's where they come in and say, well, if we know that Satan's real, we know he has people doing his bidding. Why would he not try and manipulate people into uh, becoming walking beings on the earth who also do his bidding? Uh, the second part is treating on the methods by which the works of witchcraft are wrought and directed and how they may be successfully annulled and dissolved. So basically, how are these witches doing what they're doing and how do we stop them from doing it? And then the third part, uh, relating to the judicial proceedings in both the ecclesiastical and civil courts against witches and uh, indeed all heretics. So how do we handle these these witches and all these dissenters of the, the Catholic ideology. We have found the witch, may we burn huh? More or less, this w w the idea of a witch hunt is so accurate in certain, like the terms of it, because it really was just like, anybody who went against the church is a witch and we're just gonna kill them. And that was like the whole point of it for centuries. Like that was, that was it. That was the whole idea is like, if you were accused of being a witch, how are we gonna prove it? Some stupid manners. And a lot of the manners that we've heard about in the past, once again, I, there's so much that I can talk about, but just a quick side note, a lot of the manners that we've heard about in the past were not necessarily used. Stoning witches only happened like once or twice burning witches at the stake. I, I, in my research, didn't find one case. I think it did happen, but it was very scarce. Normally they were hung. Um, but there were ways of testing if you, if you were a witch. Like we would tie stones to your feet and put you in the river. And if you drowned, you weren't a witch. But if you didn't drown, you were a witch and then we hung you. 
she weighs the same as a duck, she's made of wood. And therefore... A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! Wild. It was a wild time. It was a wild time, the 1400s and the 1500s and the 1600s and the 1700s and history's fun. That's why I don't understand when people are like, I don't like history. I'm like, at one, everything is history. Everything is history or is going to be history at some point. So today is going to be history tomorrow. So like you have to like it somewhat. And uh, two, it's just you haven't found what you like in history yet. There's something you like in history. It's something out there that interests you. And if it's true crime or if it's the witch trials or if it's what, I don't know. I like the dark aspects of history. So here we are. Let's move along. So let's start talking about some of the fun things they talk about in the first part. Whether church can be generated by incubi and succubi. So can you procreate with demons? I believe the answer was yes. It's been a while and I did not look at that chapter, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they came to the conclusion that it could happen. Let's find some of the fun ones. Guys, there's so much. If you guys are liking this and you would like me to do like deep dives into spe specifics of it, like I could definitely honestly go chapter by chapter and just be like, hey, this is chapter one. This is what they talk about. This is what it means. This is circumstances where it was enacted, things like that. I would happily do that. But if it's, if it's you guys care about it, you may not care about it as much as I do. I care about it. I think it's interesting as shit. All right, let's get into the fun ones. The, the stealing penises. I know everybody's attention was caught by that, right? Whether witches can sway the minds of men to love or hatred, whether witches can uh, habitate the powers of generation or obstruct the venereal act, this is where we start getting into the stealing penises idea. That particular wordy way of saying that is, can they obstruct the procreation? More or less, can they cause impotency? Because at the time, if a man had erectile dysfunction, instead of just being like, hey, my junk don't work, they'd be like, a witch stole my penis. And they truly believed it. And it really was like a punishable crime. Like people were absolutely brought up on charges of like, oh, you definitely like took the man's ability to procreate um, because you're an evil hoe, literally. And people would be like, oh my God, burner. Or no, I just said that wasn't really a thing. Oh my God, hanger that would be more likely what would happen. I'm going in with which was the light pink shade as the blending shade. I think that's gonna play really well. So that's where you start seeing the penises. But but no, that's not enough. They also said it is possible for women to create women, witches, but they were all pretty much women at the time. Wake up, Tina, witches are everywhere. They, they really believed that it was possible for these witches, these accused witches to, um, to give the illusion that like to manipulate a man's mind into thinking that he, his member is gone too. So like they could like create some sort of false, uh, false images in his head where he just looks down and he sees Ken doll type junk. So that was also a theory, but really when we talk about like the witches stealing penises, like can they steal penises? It was mainly on the guys that they were creating impotency and therefore they were they were hurting the this man's bloodline because they've taken his ability to procreate. And it's because they somehow seduced him with their evil wiles. And now he he can no longer procreate because of that, because they're, you know, so evil and he's just a poor innocent man. He can't he can't fight against that. What is he supposed to do? Some of the other more interesting aspects of it. The idea of becoming a witch was also said that it, it, there had to be some sort of like sexual relation with either a demon or the devil himself. There's actually a chapter that says like, does, <laughs> I wonder if I can find it. Let's see, I bet I can. Let's, let's touch back on the eye look because we are, I'm kind of, it's a first impression that's like, I love this, I love the makeup. Honestly, if I were hating it, I probably would be like, wow, this sucks, but I'm focused on the witch stuff. I'm really liking how this is working now. So just to recap, we've used this shade, we've used this shade, we've used this shade. We are now going in with, I'm gonna go ahead and do just a touch of, I think I'm actually gonna do a touch of this pretty uh, pink shade up here for the glitter. I'm gonna do it just under my brows and finish that off. Then we're gonna do a cut crease. And then we're gonna go in with, I am still gonna use this glitter shade. I wanna see how it plays out. And we're gonna do that. And then uh, we'll be coming to a close. Um, there's so much I haven't talked about on this. I'm really serious. You guys are enjoying it and you are interested in my witch facts. Um, I will happily uh, go back and look at a lot of my notes and papers. I'll read Malleus Mouth Karma again. We can do a whole like series where I just talk about the witch trials and things like that. Cause there's so much to unpack. There's just so much to unpack. Um, and I find it fascinating, but okay, let's go. Let's let's do this though. Let's do the makeup. All right, back at it. In one of the chapters, basically they pose the question, in order to, to convert somebody into a witch, in order for them to seal the deal, to really like, you know, really make sure that they are committed, does there have to be some sort of exchange of semen? 
verbatim, that's what they said. The semen have to be present for that seal to be, uh, for that deal to be sealed. And uh, more or less, they were like, yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, they don't have any facts. It's not like they're like, you know, watching these witches get converted. Like, no, they're just speculating. So they're saying, well, based on our guess, they have to sleep with the demon. So that's probably, it's probably it. Along with that, they said, well, they gotta sleep with the demon, but there has to be some sort of a mark on their body too. So this is where the idea that moles and other um, birthmarks, things like that, anything that wasn't like perfectly beautiful skin as you would see in the, the 1400s when everybody showered once a year and was out in the sun almost 100% of the time. Obviously they had flawless skin. She has got a wart. And if they had any sort of blemish or mark on it, then they were most likely a, de or a, a witch because they've clearly had to have some sort of intercourse with a demon. So people would be out, you know, for their yearly bath in the, the rivers and somebody would see them, catch a glimpse of them by accident and they'd be all naked and they'd be like, oh my God, she's got a mole on her ass. She's a, a witch. And that would be like enough. And people would be like, yep, probably. Probably let's start the trial, let's do this. And then really at that point, if you were accused, there was very few people who came back from that. So it was really, it was a scary time. Like it, there was no, you could piss the wrong person off and they'd just be like, well, you're a witch. And everybody in the world was like, probably got a stoner. I keep saying that because everybody thinks to stone the witch. It's not true. Don't listen to me when I say that. It's just me saying things. So that was the whole thing. The idea that they had to have some sort of sexual relations with uh, the demon, I think that was once again, to just to diminish women in this, being that most of the women, or most of the people accused were women. They did it to kind of like show in this time period where like sexual purity and all of that, like nobody was supposed to have sex outside of wedlock. If you were in like a marriage, you were probably only supposed to have sex to procreate. Like it was just really was one of those things where like sex was just very, very taboo. And so how do you dehumanize somebody? Well, you say they've had, they've chosen to have sex with an ungodly being in order to make a deal with the devil. And everybody went, well, yeah, that's horrible. Cause like, well, I mean, your opinions are your own opinions. It's not personally something I would want to partake in. So yeah, I mean, it'd probably be easy to convince some really, 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 really super religious, like crazy, <laughs> everything about your life is revolving around the church type people that, uh, that that's not good. And you should probably be really afraid of anybody willing to do that. So that was why they, I, I would believe that would be one of the big factors in like, hey, how are we gonna convince people to like just lead a blind manhunt for these people? Well, we say that they've had sex with a demon and that there are visible markings on their body and now they have the ability to steal uh, you and or your husband's penis and or, in case the wife had a penis too. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, so they were like, yeah, they're just like, look, this is all bad. Like, this is bad stuff. Do you wanna be able to have babies? Well, we probably should get rid of witches. Do you wanna, you know, be able to bathe in the river once a year and not have to see somebody's ass mole and be like, oh my God, they've had sex with a demon. Well, then we should probably start killing the witches. Like it was wild, it was wild. The ways that they would test people to see if they were witches were also wild. I mean, the mole was like a big telltale sign. They said there has to be some sort of physical blemish on their body to prove that they're a witch. So sometimes like it was, it was crazy. There were times where people were just accused of witchcraft and then they would like strip them and be like, all right, let's check you for moles. I can tell you, I can point out like seven or eight moles on my body that would definitely classify me as being a witch. Honestly, there's some, I think some people say that if you have a mark right here on this arm, um, like anywhere in this general area, it means that you have witches in your bloodline. Wouldn't surprise me. I've got a pretty noticeable one right there, but I've got like birthmarks everywhere. And I've got like this giant one on my, the side of my thigh. And my mom has one in almost the exact same spot. Like it's just a giant like mole. And it doesn't like, it, it's flat, but it's like a birthmark type thing. And, and I'm like, well, there's our witch mark mom. And she's like, maybe, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know, Prob probably. All right, let's go in with power. No, no, I'm like, God, I'm so dumb. Sorry, shadowy, we're going with shadowy. Power is the pink one. I like them both. I'm gonna have to use this palette again because I like it. Maybe we do another witch video. I'll do a whole different look with it. You guys are into it. I was worried about this like marbled glitter effect, but I think it's gonna be gorgeous. I am using a brush. I know I always talk about like, is a brush better to use? Is a finger better to use? Who knows? That is the real question. That's the million dollar question every day. I'm using a brush today. It's kind of working. I may have to go in with a finger. That sounds so dirty. I'm so sorry. I'm not intending it for it to sound perverse, but it definitely does. And like, you know, if you're a 12 year old and boy in your mind, then you can giggle at it like I did mentally. Pretty though. I really like it. I'm into it. 
I think the brush is the probably the best application for it. I feel like on my finger, it just wouldn't have picked up as well. I guess I could test the finger on the other eye, but I really don't want to do that because it just makes my hands dirty and I don't feel like doing that today. I love this palette though. Uh, we haven't really talked about the palette. I've said that before, but the uh, palette's great. It's 11 bucks is what I got it on sale. I think full price was like 15. It's worth it. Go find that. It's pretty, it's easy to use. The colors are gorgeous. There's great payoff. Okay guys, this is the final look. This side's kind of a little wonky. It just didn't blend out as well, but honestly, I think that's because I put my um, primer on, my eyeshadow primer on, and then it sat for like 30 to 40 minutes because we it took us a while to film. I think that could be part of it too. Also, this eye just always gives me trouble, so whatever. I love the palette though. It was $11 that I paid for, $11.24 I paid on sale. I think, like I said, I think it's normally like $14.99. It's worth it. It's beautiful. It They blend out well. I was really worried that it was gonna be one of those where I kind of was like, well, that was a waste of $10. Does not feel like drugstore makeup. It really doesn't. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, it's definitely kind of made me want to try more Essence stuff. And then plus like just really pretty, everything about it, love it. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about Malleus Maleficarum. There is so much. When I tell you guys, there's so much to unpack. The book copy of it is like a hundred pages, but this PDF that I had of it, the way it was broken down was like 700 pages. I think there's like some commentaries and stuff in it too. If you guys like this, there's so much I can talk about with the witch trials. There's other stuff that Nikki and I love in history that we could talk about too. Um, we both extensively studied World War II. I'm fascinated with World War II. Um, there's so much to talk about with that. If there's anything in history you want me to talk about, I would love to hear your guys' input. Um, it's something that kind of makes it a little bit easier for me to um, to keep it from being dead space and things like that. Anything that you guys would like me to talk about or you think like, hey, this might be cool, maybe do this or maybe do this. Love to hear your suggestions in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It, that helps us. It also makes us feel nice. So like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. Uh, just hit the little subscribe button and the notification bell so you see when we upload. And other than that, I hope you guys are all safe and healthy and you have a wonderful day and stay girly with a dark twist.